Jung once said that the ego and the shadow come from the same source and exactly balance each other. To make light is to make shadow. One cannot exist without the other. Jung had gone through a highly refined and culturating process from his childhood in a rigid Swiss Protestant home to the severe discipline of his medical training. Long hours of concentrated attention gave him a very focused personality, but this was at the cost of ignoring the dark and primitive aspects that appeared in his dream. The more refined our conscious personality, the more shadow we have built up on the other side. India has three terms describing this place of sainthood, Sat, Chit, Anand. Sat is the existential stuff of life, mostly the left side of the balance. Chit is the ideal capacity, mostly the right side of the balance. And Ananda is the bliss, joy, ecstasy of enlightenment, the fulcrum or the central piece of the seesaw. When Sat and Chit are paired together and sufficiently conscious, then Ananda, the joy of life, is created. This is won by owning one's own shadow. While those with the largest talent seems to suffer most, we all must be aware of how we use our creativity and of the dark side that accompanies our gifts. To make a work of art, to say something kind, to help others, to beautify the house, to protect the family, all these acts will have an equal weight on the opposite side of the scale and can lead us into sin. We cannot refuse our creativity or stop expressing ourselves in this way, yet we can be aware of this dynamic and make some small but conscious gestures to compensate for it. How then can one produce something of beautiful or goodness without doing an equal amount of wreckage? It is possible to live one's ideals, do one's best, be courteous, do well at work, and live a decent civilized life if we ritually acknowledge this other dimension of reality. The unconscious cannot tell the difference between a real act and a symbolic one. This means that we can aspire to beauty and goodness and pay out that darkness in a symbolic way. This enables us to do the upkeep on the left side of the balance. Biblical custom states that if one can achieve this before sunset or at least before the Sabbath, one can maintain one's inner harmony. Robert A. Johnson, an American Jungian analyst and author, puts it in his book owning your own shadow like this. There are times when the shadow crops up in one's profession. I try very hard to produce the best possible presentation in my lectures and books through discipline and hard work. The whole cultural world would fail if one did not maintain such a discipline. But this instantly constellates the worst in me and activates my shadow. I keep it out of sight as best I can and when it does occasionally show itself, I am inordinately embarrassed. Yet I have the devil's own price to pay if I leave the shadow in the unconscious and do nothing intelligent about it. If I do not redress that imbalance quickly, I will soon be rude to someone, turn up a thoroughly nasty side of my character, or fall into a depression. The shadow will claim its due in some form, intelligent or stupid. Does this mean that I have to be as destructive as I am creative, as dark as I am light? Yes, but I have some control over how or where I will pay the dark price. The central symbol of Christianity, the cross, is a double seesaw with the two axes crossing at the center. It provides the framework for balancing the right and left and also the high and the low. If one can honor this equilibrium, one will be truly catholic, meaning whole or complete. To refuse the dark side of one's nature is to store up or accumulate the darkness. This is later expressed as a black mood, psychosomatic illness, or unconsciously inspired accidents. We are presently dealing with the accumulation of a whole society that has worshipped its light side and refused the dark. 
and this residue appears as war, economic chaos, strikes, and racial intolerance.